Hey guys, thanks for tuning in again today. My name's Steve Cooper. You're watching In Deep on the Delta. Today we're going to be talking about a technique that I call draping. And that is a technique that I use with worms that kind of covers the area between when I'm punching and when I'm open water worm fishing. I'm also going to be talking a lot about the use of this little indicator. That's a real killer out here. Not many people are using it. So later in the day, I'll find a place where the wind is down a little bit and we'll go over exactly how I use this indicator. But for now, as I'm fishing, just keep in mind that I'm always watching this indicator and this little white knot really shows up against the water. I know you can't see it uh, in the video, but I'm always watching that indicator knot and it's gonna detect any subtle little changes that might happen in the worm if I get a jump. Uh, a little jump bite or a pop. With low tide, we're going to be dealing more with submerged vegetation and shallower water, so we're going to have to change up our techniques. Figuring out different techniques, when to change, how to use them, and what baits to use when you change techniques. Now, I've still got a couple feet of water in near the tulies, and because we have some wave action, and because we have a shade line in there, the fish will still hold in tight to the tulies. So I'm hoping for those fish. Some of the fish will be moving out because the tide's moving out, but there will always be a few shallow fish. And there's one right there. Okay, on that particular fish, it picked up the worm very subtly, and one of the ways that I detected that was by seeing that white indicator, just do this. I knew something was going on. The wind's blowing a little bit, so my line's kind of got a bow in it, but when I was watching that indicator, it just popped. That's when I reeled up, I felt the fish, and I set the hook. Nice fish. Let's go see if we can get another one. Pitch it out, rod low, drop it right down, point the rod tip at the worm, and just keep contact with it. Give it a couple pops, on to the next target. Low, down, on the water. I can feel everything that that worm's doing. So a lot of times, there's one. Oh, that's a nice one. got that fish by keeping contact with the worm. So quick recap on what happened on that last fish. What I did was I kept my bait low to the water. As soon as it hit, I dropped my rod tip, pointed it at the bait, and just started reeling slowly. So I kept contact with the bait. I felt that fish grab it, and I immediately set the hook. Now, if I would have thrown a cast way up in the air, and up here, there's a big bow in my line because of the wind. I never would have felt that fish. Possibly he would have grabbed it and spit it. So in that case, technique was very important. It's time to talk about the draping technique. 
uh, we're going to talk about the advantages of this technique, where we like to use it, and how we set up. So to start off with, any rod that you use to throw a T-rigged worm will work. So a seven foot, seven foot two medium heavy rod, something with some backbone to pull fish out of cover is just fine. Uh, I like to use 40 pound braid or 50 pound braid, uh, and then I will use about four foot of uh, four feet of uh, usually 15 to 20 pound mono and a regular T worm setup. And I'll use anywhere from a quarter ounce to a half ounce weight. I'll keep it pegged with a bobber stop. An inline worm hook is fine, or if you like the extra wide gap, that's fine also. You can use a number of baits uh, on this rig, whether it's a worm, curly tail worm, a cinco, cut tail like I have on here. You can use creature baits. You can use whatever bait that you believe is going to catch fish on that particular day. Now, behind me, you'll see a, 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 a tule bank. This is absolutely the place that you want to be using that, this technique. This rod, we have our, um, our indicator set up here. It's colored white. I know it's hard to see. So for demonstration purposes today, this indicator, and I, it's an FG knot that I paint white. If you've looked at my FG knot video, it tells all about how I paint this and, and set this up. And I've got about mm, three and a half, four feet of leader. On this rod, for demonstration purposes, I have a piece of pink yard, and if you can see that, it's tied right on my FG knot. This is just for demonstration purposes because when we're fishing, I know it's hard for you to see the actual, uh, the actual colored white FG knot. When I'm fishing out here against the water, I can see it real well, but on the video, you can't. These are the areas that draping really comes into play. All of these little back areas, out of the current, behind the toolies, they're not punching areas. They're areas that you, you will not be able to fish with a drop shot or a um, Nico style rig worm because you're going to get it hung up. But there's plenty of canopy with down toolies to keep these fish in areas like this, especially during the summer when it's hot. Every one of these down toolie structures is a prime target. Boy, these are the places that I really like to get into. There's one. Hopefully you saw that take and where the bait was and how the indicator and the draping method helped to catch this fish. Not a huge one, but it's a fun fish to catch. Take a, took a cut tail worm way back in the tulies, draping it over. Oh! Hi. Well, guys, I just broke one off. That was a good fish. Darn. Yep. I'll use something a little heavier. So seven foot, seven foot two. What do we have out there? I don't know if you caught that on camera, but 
something came up and took something. I have a pe no, the stripers are out here boiling out in front of me. Makes me want to fish for stripers for a while, but anyhow. Oh, nice schooly striper. This one was a schooly, but I think there's going to be some bigger ones out here. Oh! Jeez. Oh. Just broke off another fish, guys. I don't know what the heck is going on today. Two, two fish that I've broken off. Wow. All right, guys, I think that's gonna be a wrap for day two of our warming video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll make sure I continue posting more videos. Um, I had a little camera trouble today. I'm hoping that we got some of our nice fish catches on camera, but if not, uh, I hope we got some of the instructional part of the video on camera, and I'm hoping that you'll be able to take some of that, put it into your arsenal. I really hope it helps you to catch more fish. If it did, that's what we're all about. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next video.